You hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, well, it was definitely a, a tale of two halves. You know, the, uh, the first half, I, I think we competed throughout the game, but uh, defensively, we had them to 38% from the field, 22% uh, from the three-point line in the first half. In the second half, they shot 60% from the field and 50% from the free throw line. And that was the difference in the game. Just remaining on edge and being able to put together 40 minutes. We put together 20, which is a good step in the right direction for us right now. And in a lot of ways, we we uh, we played the right way. We played with a lot of vigor and will in the first half. And we didn't exhibit that same will and toughness in the second half, not only with our defense, but uh, when our defense put us in a hold and our decisions compounded that as the game went on. So um, we uh, we got another week uh, before we play again and more time to practice and more time to improve. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the, the headspace where these guys are right now. And I think we got an opportunity to really make some strides. Appreciate it, Coach. At this time, we'll take questions from members of the media. Coach. You had some inside things working tonight, uh, especially in the first half. Was that a good sign? Is that what you're trying to do? Absolutely. You know, we, we, we've made a conscious effort to work at that uh, with the return of Ellie, and we, we've tried to also not overwork him, um, but to work him in to it because uh, he brings that element to our team. And uh, it takes, uh, you know, I think Jalen uh, compliments him well and having him back out there, I think brings out uh, some of what makes Jalen good. And, and I think it also helped uh, uh, Jaheim in a reserve role uh, to give us some depth along the front line, and, you know, uh, we had some live ball turnovers in the second half that really hurt us and led to some run outs. You know, that's why we only had five turnovers in the first half, but we had some key turnovers in the second half. But yeah, we definitely had more balance, um, but just didn't finish the game great on offense or defense. You forced the 19 turnovers, but only 19 points off of them. And especially early in the second half, it felt like, I think you got three on the first three possessions and couldn't put yeah. points up there. And it, it seemed like maybe the 19 turnovers wasn't as impactful on the result as it should have been or could have been. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Uh, you know, I, 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 I wasn't a big fan of the, uh, the offensive foul call when, when uh, Corey uh, got it going in transition. I thought that was a tough one. Um, but you're right. You know, when you when you do turn somebody over 19 times, you got to complete those plays. And, you know, especially against a good team, they got some good offensive players. They're playing at home. They need a win. They're 0 2 in the league. And, um, so that was that was that was critical for us. Coach Marcel for the Sports Acquire. You mentioned Corey, just a tough night from the field shooting wise. Uh, just what do you see from him out there? Just uh, what do you think just maybe led to just those struggles for him uh, scoring tonight? You know, I, I think with a lot of young guys, it's important to see yourself through a broader lens as a player. You know, Corey's got a great reputation as a scorer. He's earned that. He's a really good offensive player. And but he's more than just that. You know, there's, there's a lot of other things he can do. And. I think sometimes you feel like if you're not doing that, you're not helping the team in the way that you're most accustomed to. And I think part of his growth here as we go down the stretch is to develop that poise and understanding that uh, no matter how I'm playing on offense, I can still affect the game in other ways. And, uh, you know, I, I think you'll see that growth from him as we go forward. Coach, you kind of touched on it earlier. Um, but what's the plan, especially with Elio only having a couple of games under his belt? What's the plan for just kind of making sure that he is um, he is as comfortable as he was last year, being in a role where he's able to um, be his dominant self? Well, the big thing is, is his health, you know, getting him in shape so that he can uh, 
how to move and play and run and, and you know his his whole uh, you know effect on the game as a player is his motor, mm-hmm. you know his ability to play harder than everyone for longer periods of time. So that requires that you get in shape. So you know we don't play for another week, and that's another week of conditioning and playing and getting some practice reps. You know he had a basically a practice and a half maybe prior to the UTA game. And we had four practices prior to this game. And then we'll get another four or so before our next game. And so uh, I expect that to pay dividends for the team. And I expect it in particular to, to, to help uh, LEL as he makes his way back to form. Coach, the, Lost and I dropped you to under 500 the first time since your first month of coaching here uh, back in November of 2019. I guess a couple of tough losses. I guess how do you what's what's got to happen for the team to not let these losses start to compound and and so you can actually turn around and start putting these games in the win column. Uh, we have to win. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean tonight we played a really good 20 minutes. Um, and we didn't finish the job. And so we've got to put together 40 minutes and uh, we'll, we'll do that. I'm confident that, uh, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, our record right now. I'm just worried about our team. And uh, I feel like our team is really starting to come together and, and uh, really starting to take shape. So I'm, I'm excited about the direction that we're going in. And uh, the numbers will take care of themselves over the course of the season. Can you get as much stuff done as you want to when you when you're having to go a week between games and you're limited just to practice time? Under the circumstances, yes, because uh, we've missed so many practices over the course of this season that uh, there is, a, I think, a blessing in that we do get some time on the floor. Like, um, you know, uh, we got one player who played 20 plus minutes tonight coming off COVID. Um, so he only had, a, uh, you know, really maybe two practices coming into that, really only one practice coming into today. So he, he gets to get back into a rhythm. Um, and then, you know, Colin Moore logged some minutes in the first half. I was proud of his contribution though you know it was a short period of time but he's starting to, his health is starting to improve we've talked about LEL so yeah this practice time is really valuable for this team right now because uh, we, not only have we missed practice time but we've missed practice time with this group as currently constructed and so the team you saw tonight you haven't seen that team on the floor together this year you know, you haven't seen Eliel and Colin on the floor together or Eliel and Nelson on the floor together. You haven't, you haven't seen this team yet. And so this team, as we're constructed going forward, um, the more practices we get, the better. 